What's up everybody, I'm Hoops and Hip Hop. So Nintendo just got done showing off their Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee footage that they debuted at E3, and watching that footage we actually learned a lot of new stuff about the game that we didn't know before. So I thought I would go ahead and round it all up in a quick, concise video just in case you guys didn't get to watch the stream or you weren't able to watch it all the way through, just so you can know everything that the game has to offer and everything new we know about the game up to this point. In addition to the 15 new facts I'm going to be sharing with you guys today, we also got a lot of new gameplay footage, and it looks absolutely amazing, so I'm going to be showing that while I'm talking through this video. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so the first thing we're going to talk about is something that was very briefly touched on during the initial reveal of Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, but it was expanded on a little bit during the extended gameplay coverage, and that would be the Pokemon Box. As we see during the gameplay, the player is able to access their Pokemon from an item called the Pokemon Box instead of using the traditional PC storage. What's interesting about this is not only obviously does it replace the PC system, but it also allows you to access any of your Pokemon that would normally be in the PC from anywhere, so you don't have to go to the Pokemon Center to get them, which I personally think is really cool because I've always kind of wanted an item or something like that to make getting Pokemon that you have outside your initial team of six because it really just makes the whole experience of training more than six Pokemon way more convenient and easy. The second thing to note here is super quick, and that's that's that the experience share is back and will give experience to every single one of your Pokemon that are in your party, much akin to the X and Y games and the Sun and Moon games where it did the same thing. Now, we don't really know if you can turn it off or on, I assume you will be able to, but for now we know for certain that it's going to be in the game and it will give experience to every single one of your Pokemon. Another thing that was really interesting that they showed off during the battle segments where they were battling trainers is that when you beat a trainer in battle, in addition to getting money, you also get some Pokeballs, which is a really interesting detail and it obviously is appealing to the casual Pokemon Go players to make it a little bit easier for them to get those Pokeballs and make it so they don't have to grind as much, I guess, or go to the Pokemon Mart as much. Another thing that's being inspired by Pokemon Go is that some Pokemon will have auras. Pokemon with blue auras will mean that they are an especially small Pokemon and are obviously going to be a weaker level and going to be smaller in weight and height as it pertains to Pokemon Go, and then Pokemon with red auras are going to be unusually large. They're going to have large CPs, they're going to weigh a lot, they're going to be bigger Pokemon in general, once again as it relates to Pokemon Go, which is pretty cool and it's awesome to see them in the overworld in real time. Another really cool feature that they've added to these games is that your partner Pokemon, either Eevee or Pikachu, depending on which game you're playing, will wag their tail when an item is nearby so you're able to find it. They showed off in the demo that there was an item that wasn't accessible or directly viewable because it was behind a tree, but Pikachu was able to wag its tail, indicating to the player that there was an item nearby. I think this is a really cool feature just because it adds to the immersion and interactivity with your Pokemon and the world itself, which I think is going to make for a really pleasant gameplay experience. Also in the Viridian Forest gameplay, it was revealed that there's going to be Pokemon that are available in new areas that they weren't available in the regular games. They showed off an Oddish that appeared in Viridian Forest, which obviously wasn't the case in the original games, and they also showed that Butterfree is catchable as well instead of just Caterpie or Metapod. One more thing that was briefly touched on in the initial reveal trailer, but basically confirmed in this extended gameplay, is that when you have large Pokemon with you, such as Onix, you actually go ahead and ride on them when you have them out of your Pokeball, instead of them just following you. This is awesome because it means the Pokemon models are going to be true to scale. It's not going to shrink every Pokemon down to a bite-sized image like it did in HeartGold and SoulSilver, and when you have those large Pokemon with you, they're actually going to be large, and naturally you're going to ride on them instead of them just following you around, which is absolutely incredible. One of the most interesting new reveals from the gameplay is that there's actually a brand new rival. Now, his name is Trace, and unfortunately they kind of did allude to the fact that he's a friendly rival, which obviously I am not personally a big fan of. However, I do like the idea of a new character because it indicates the possibility of brand new story elements, and Bill Trennan and the rest of the Nintendo staff also did indicate or briefly mention that there's also going to be other new characters, which I am really excited for because it obviously just brings new stuff for us to experience for the very first time. 
Going along with the fact that these games are based on and kind of a remake of Pokemon Yellow, we have a very nice nod to the anime and that Chansey is out and about with Nurse Joy in the Pokemon Center. Obviously, in the Indigo Plateau saga of the anime, this was always the case. Chansey was always with Nurse Joy and we see that in this game, which is an amazing touch that honestly just adds to the beauty of this game. Also shown off in the Pewter City part of the gameplay is the fact that there's going to be new side quests in this game. Now, the one that they showed off isn't really much of a side quest, but it is a new side activity, if you will, that wasn't in the initial game, where you're essentially babysitting this lady's slowpoke for her, and after you're done, she gives you an item. Another thing I wanted to bring up is that the gyms look absolutely amazing in this game. They added a spectator section to the gyms where NPCs are actually watching the gym battles, which is obviously a nice nod to the anime where we saw this, but it's just another thing to make the world in this game that much more awesome, that much more immersive, and it's once again a nice nod to the anime, much like Pokemon Yellow, the game that these are based on, had a lot of anime nods to it as well. Next, we have a couple facts about the Pokeball Plus. The first thing that was revealed about the Pokeball Plus was in Nintendo's E3 presentation, and that's that Mew is actually going to be inside of every Pokeball Plus when they are purchased. So when you purchase a Pokeball Plus, Mew will already be inside, and you can basically instantly transfer it into the game. The next thing about the Pokeball Plus is that with Pokemon Go, it can actually be used as a Pokemon Go Plus. So it's got the controller Joy-Con option with the Nintendo Switch, but the Pokemon Go Plus option with the phone phones and Pokemon Go itself, which really makes this device an incredibly diverse and awesome device in general that it can be used in multiple ways like that. During the initial reveal of these games, we learned about a place called the Go Park, which is where the Pokemon that you transferred from Pokemon Go would go to reside in the game till you caught them. Well, we learned in this gameplay trailer that Go Park is going to replace the Safari Zone in Fuchsia City. Now, I have mixed feelings about this because on the one hand, it really sucks that there's replacing the Safari Zone because it's an iconic location in the Kanto games. However, obviously, since so many of the Safari Zone Pokemon like Chansey and Rhyhorn are so easily accessible in Pokemon Go, really defeats the purpose, of, especially when you also consider the fact that most likely the HMs are going to be replaced with Pokemon Ride, which means you don't really have the need to go through the Safari Zone in order to get the Surf HM, so it kind of makes sense that they would find a natural replacement for it. And last but not least, we actually have a brand new candy system for Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Shown off in the gameplay, basically how it works is when you catch Pokemon, you can send them to Professor Oak, and in exchange, he'll send you various candies, which can then be used to strengthen your Pokemon. Now, these candies will actually strengthen specific stats of your Pokemon, much like the other items we've seen in the past, like Calcium and the other supplemental items that do the same thing. However, now we have a way to get them quickly and easily by catching Pokemon and transferring them to Professor Oak. And this is actually an incentive for players to catch as many Pokemon as possible Possible, instead of just catching the ones they want on their team or catching one of each of the 151 Pokemon or something like that, it just gives more incentive to basically play the game more to basically catch more Pokemon in order to strengthen up your Pokemon to be as strong as possible. And there we have it everybody, those were 15 new facts you need to know that were revealed during the gameplay session of Nintendo Treehouse at the Nintendo E3 Showcase. I am extremely, extremely excited for these games because in this gameplay footage, it really was proven with no doubt in my mind whatsoever that these games are gorgeous and that they're going to be awesome because we saw in this gameplay that they really do play like a traditional Pokemon game even though they do have a lot of that Pokemon Go integration. If you guys enjoyed this video and you are excited for Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, please hit that like button because it really helps the video out and let me know which of these new facts and details you are most excited about. Or if you have any other thoughts or ideas about what we learned, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for way more Pokemon content each and every week, including way more Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee videos, including my own ideas about the game, as well as news videos and basically just keeping you guys informed on what's going on. Anyways, though, with all of that being said, I will be back with another video very, very soon. So until then, as always, I will smell you guys later.